We are a peaceful people. Struggle is a struggle, and we don't look for trouble. Just ask around. But when outside faces from foreign places talk about taking over, we ain't backing down. We ain't giving up no mountains. We ain't giving up no tree. We ain't giving up no river that belongs to we. Not one blue sake, not one rice grain, not one karaz, not a blade of grass. This land is all I know. We're gonna make it somehow. We will bend like a bow and never break. Our fathers came here and they lived and died here, and we ain't moving nowhere. Making mistake Cause we ain't giving up no mountains. We ain't giving up, we ain't giving up no tree. We ain't giving up, ain't giving up the river. Up. That belongs to we. Not one blue sake. Not one rice grain. Not one grass. Not a bit of grass. We love the open country of the Rupununi. And the yes, equable the time or night. Though we may criticize it, this is our own. We love it, and we mean to keep it. We have that right. So we ain't giving up no mountains. We ain't giving up. We ain't giving up no trees. We ain't giving up no river that belongs to we. Not one blue sake, not one rice grain, not one grass, not a bit of grass. So we ain't giving up no mountains, we ain't giving up no tree, we ain't giving up no river that belongs to we. Not one blue sake, not one rice grain, not one grass. Not a blade of grass. Yeah, my name is Jasniti Kaldata Francis C. Vietnam. And since 1965, I become a voter. And I always place my ex next to the cup. And what they are doing today, I can't take it. So I have no more vote to give to PPP anymore. I'm not going to vote anymore in the moon. If they have to lose by one vote, they're losing it by data. So this is attorney Shellen Washington, owner and founder of the Washington Law Firm, located at 455 Utica Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. We're specialized in medical malpractice, personal injuries, matrimonial law, and landlord and tenant. If you're in need of legal representation, please give us a call today. The number to call is 718-877-3100. Consultation is free at no cost to you. So call us today to see if we can be of any assistance to your legal needs. Again, the phone number to call us is 718-877-3100. You could probably, on the maritime area, give Venezuela a channel out to the sea. So you make a slight concession. Oh, Jesus Christ, if Castle live it double, I don't know what happened. A pound of sugar is $300 already. Flour, everything gone up. Everything just raising. You gotta get about $40,000 for buy good ration. You gotta get three man now. A weekend man, a monthly man, and a, and a um, fortnight man.
All right, good evening. It's six minutes after nine o'clock, Guyana time. My name is Mark Benchap. Uh, we're still on the circus, right? Uh, because it's Friday, you guys want something to laugh about. Uh, we're still at the circus, still at the circus, looking at the clungs, all of the clungs in the circus. Uh, we minus Anthony Skerritt, uh, we don't have any reason to consider him part of the circus, even though he was invited to be there in the circus. Um, and some others uh, we leave out, but we know who the clungs are. We are looking at uh, three of them right there. Uh, and we shouldn't be ashamed to say the clung from Guyana, Irfan Ali, the clung from Venezuela, Maduro, and that clung from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Ralph Clung Clungsalves. Ralph Clungsalves. Good evening to all of you. It's Friday. And usually, you know, it's, uh, what is it you say? Thank God it's Friday, right? Well, thank God it's Friday. Good evening to all of you. Um, let's see here. I'm just running through some of the comments. Uh, we should have uh, one or two folks on with us. I don't know if they pay the, uh, their phone bills. They are going to be on. If not, well, it is what it is, right? We might as well just probably call, um, what's his name again? Um, Lemon. To see what Lemon is up to and whether Lemon wants to just come on and talk about uh, what's happening there with the Venezuelan stuff. Uh, you know, Lemon usually tries his best, as I've said. Lemon is lemon, uh, low energy lemon. But hopefully, if our supervisor allows lemon to come on, then we possibly could hear a little bit from lemon this evening. Um, all right, so let's, uh, if lemon can just remove those uh, clungs off and uh, let's begin the program. Good evening. My name is Mark Benchap. It's Friday. Uh, and we usually say, thank God it's Friday, right? T G I F. I promise you guys not to throw any shades tonight, just to behave myself. If How many of you guys think that I should behave myself tonight? I want to behave myself. Uh, I've been told that I'm misbehaving, that I'm a naughty boy, uh, politically speaking, that is, right? If you guys give me the go-ahead and say, look, I should behave myself tonight, then I, I'm, I'm going to follow you guys. Michelle Justice and all the guys, all, when, when I say guys, I don't mean like, when I say Michelle, Michelle obviously is not a guy. No, I'm just, you know, uh, Brennan Thompson and all of you guys, uh, I'm sorry that I'm starting off like that. Uh, again, I'm being mischievous. Um, so true, Hector. And all of you, all of you, good evening. It's Friday. What else we can do? We're warming up. We're warming up. Uh, we get some folks from, oh, look at that name. Michelle has a name out of this world that I don't even want to pronounce. Uh, Michelle is saying, get on back. Uh, we, we just don't do that here on 107.1 FM. I got something to tell you guys, because a lot of folks have been saying to me uh, that whenever the program is on, they, they just don't get any notification at all. And let's sit down and let's go through this nice and slowly tonight. Let's go through this slowly. You wouldn't get notification whenever there's a live show here if you just click on like. If you like this page, 107.1 FM Ben Shop Radio page, you're just liking it. You're not going to get notification. But if you click on the follow button, you have to follow us right here on Ben Shop Radio page. In order to get notification, you got to click on the follow button. Click the follow button. Click If you haven't clicked on the follow button following this page, not my personal page, Mark Anthony Ben Shop. That is my personal page. If we are not connected directly on that page, then you can't comment. People have been asking, why are they blocked from commenting as though they did something to me or they owe me or I owe them? And the other thing is, Guyanese, you, you can't owe Guyanese these days. Like they get vexed more than you when you can't pay them back. It's something that's very annoying to me. Don't you guys get annoyed sometimes when you owe some Guyanese and you can't pay them back and they're more vexed than you, right? They want to be wrong and strong more than you. You owe them. And they won't get vexed with you. 
Chaim Zerofer, probably I'll rest yourself. Some of them who I owe, you have this white for 2023. Don't let me go into 2024 with nonsense and things from we mine and all them things. Wipe it off. Or who owe me, I'll best pay up. Good evening to all of you guys again. It's a, it's um, it's Friday evening. Uh, you know what's happening in your neck of the wood. I don't know what's going on, but let's take you guys to. Um, and as we get ready to get the program going, let's take you guys to Saint Vincent. Let's take you to Saint Vincent. There's a madman in Saint Vincent because the the sort of leaders that we are accustomed to. You know. Brenda Casey, please. Brenda's saying it's called dishonesty. If you owe somebody, if somebody owes you and you can't pay them, like for example, if I owe somebody and I can't pay them, I think it is so wrong for them to get vexed and upset. And they shouldn't. Let bygones be bygones. I'm done with my story. I'm done with that, Brenda. I'm done with it. It's not dishonesty. The Bible says, what about paying back? Bible says if you somebody can't pay back, Proverbs 34, 72 says if you can't pay some if somebody can't pay you back, just wipe it off. That's what the, the Bible. I'm just kidding with you guys. I'm messing with you guys. Come on, Brenda. Loosen up a little bit. I'm just messing with you guys. If you if you owe people, you gotta pay them. All right, guys. Um, let's go to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Just imagine this madman. Take a look at this madman in St. Vincent. Take a look at him. Y'all know who. Before we go to the madman, Lemon, before we go to that madman in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, let me see if you guys know who is that madman, who I'm referring to as that madman. Let me see. We got, we, we, we are interacting with each other here tonight, right? Good evening again to all of you. Let me see if you guys know who that madman is. Going once, going twice. Somebody said Maduro is uh, who's a madman in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, guys. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Venezuela has its madman. Somebody said Brickhead, somebody said Boss Head. All manner of things y'all doing to whoever it is. Boss Head, Boss Head. All right, good. Take a look. Take a listen to Boss Head right now. And let me get your take on it, please. I don't want anything at all to communicate with him about. I don't want him to tell me morning. I'm not telling him morning. All right, good. Let's start over back again. Let's pretend as though we're doing an interview. So let's get straight over to uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, uh, the so-called prime minister there. Mr. Prime Minister, can you say uh, after this circus that you guys had in St. Vincent there, uh, what is your take on Irfan Ali and how he handled himself there? And I want you to be honest, please, uh, Mr. Gonzalez. I don't want have anything at all to communicate with him about. I don't want him to tell me morning. I'm not telling him morning. Not only not talking to him, not answering the phone. <laughs> where where they find these guys from? Where they find these guys from? Just imagine he is a prime minister, a prime minister of a country. And this is how he feels about Air Finale right now. This is because Air Finale probably didn't pay up whatever they had to pay up. Because you know Ralph is all about the money, right? Listen to Ralph. I don't want to have anything at all to communicate with him about. I don't want him to tell me morning. I'm not telling him morning. Not only not talking to him, not answering the phone. Hey, we can't make these things up, guys. We cannot. You guys think I'm making that up? That's not a skit or anything. That's boss head. That's brick head. Can you guys believe that? What's it? Look, let's play it again. Come on. Uh, Lemon, come on before you get fired tonight. Before I stop talking to you, I want you to tell me morning or nothing. Listen to this. Listen to this guy. I don't want to have anything at all to communicate with him about. I don't want him to tell me morning. I'm not telling him morning. Not only not talking to him, not answering the phone. Look, guys, I keep saying to you guys that men catch more feelings than women. Men are more emotional than women. 
They're very emotional. Before we get to our guest, and a very important guy, and I always I like to say I appreciate every time I call him when he's sleeping or he just gets up and I say, look, come on, Enrico, let's talk a little bit. Let's talk a little bit. Enrico is with us this evening. Uh, Enrico's studio uh, is looking better and better every time he's on. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to look at his books and everything that he has there. And you see that 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 uh, degree that he has there. You take a look at it. Take a look. That's from Sarah. I can put my head on the block. Six point five percent of my salary. That that is from Syracuse University. Syracuse University. All right. Well, I have mine. You know, I flat University. I flat, and I'm proud of that. Enrico, good evening to you, sir. How are you? Okay, Enrico, say hold on. Hold on a second. That's all right. Let's give Enrico a minute or two. Enrico is the managing director and editor in chief of. Um, of let me see if you guys. I'm looking at your comment. What newscast Enrico is uh, the boss for out there in Guyana? Let me see if you guys know. He just got disconnected. Probably on a dial up. Let me see if you guys know um, Enrico. What, Roxanne, you already know what's going on. You could tell you just out uh, uh, capital news. And y'all type it like y'all pronouncing it like Enrico Capital News. Enrico, goodbye now. <laughs> goodbye now. <laughs> goodbye now. Good evening to you guys. Uh, we're just warming up. I know it's Friday. Um, and I just don't want to be uh, the type that comes on and, and and you guys think that I don't have a, a life other than communicating to you often. Because when I'm not on the air, people, oh, where are you? Why are you not reporting? Or, like if I don't have a life. Like if, uh, like if I don't, I can't contribute or put something on the table. You know what I mean by that, right? The guy out in Barbados saying that um, Maya should put something on the table. Right? on the table too right but let's get back uh to this this paku out in st vincent i don't want anything at all to communicate with him about i don't want him to tell me morning i'm not telling him morning not only not talking to him not answering the phone nothing he's not um he's not telling anybody morning he's not I don't know what's going on. Why you? And, and I was I was saying uh, just before Enrico uh, that men get into their feelings. You know, we'll talk about that some other time. We will talk about that some other time. Enrico is with us here. Uh, his microphone is working now. He's looking all dapper. Um, I wouldn't say as always, but he's looking dapper tonight. Good evening to you, Mr. Wolford. Good evening, Mark. Thank you very much for asking me to come on your program once again. Yes, and I appreciate the fact that you take time out to just uh, hop on, even though sometimes I don't give you advance notice. Uh, but thank you so much. Uh, before we get into question, I was wondering a little bit whether Ralph Gonzalez, the Prime Minister of uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, was actually talking to you when he said this. I don't want anything at all to communicate with him about. I don't want him to tell me morning. I'm not telling him morning. Not only not talking to him, not answering the phone. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, that is how I feel today. All right, that wasn't you though, Enrico, right? We're glad that it wasn't you. But talk to us a little bit. Uh, I assume you're, just, you're back from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, give us a quick rundown on what really transpired, your opinion, your experience, and so forth. Well, what happened in um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines was the, to the they had talks. The two leaders of the contiguous states, I like, I like to call them, um, Venezuela and Guyana. Guyana's president, Irfan Ali, was invited by the uh, pro tem um, chair of CELAC, the community of Latin American uh, countries, uh, and he is Ralph Gonzalez, 
because St. Kitts is holding that position at the moment. And CARICOM, uh, the chairman of CARICOM, uh, Roosevelt Skerritt, uh, he and um, Dr. Gonzalez got together and they asked uh, the two leaders. The idea was to what they are calling de-escalate the issue uh, with regard to the tension between the two countries as a result of the challenges uh, that Venezuela has uh, taken up against Guyana because Venezuela has uh, for several years now, going back to the 60s, uh, brought up the issue of the, uh, of the border, the controversy over the border. Now, Guyana's position since 1962, from the time Venezuela raised it in the Decolonization Committee of the United Nations, that, look, this story is Venezuela's problem. Venezuela has a problem. Guyana is not at all uh, uh, concerned about Venezuela's problem, other than the fact that if Venezuela attempts to annex Guyana's territory or dismember it in any way, form, or fashion. And every single prime minister, premier, president of Guyana has taken exactly the same position with regard to Venezuela to, on our Western Front. Absolutely. And so... Uh... One of the things that I saw, and scores of folks were, who were watching the joint press conference yesterday, no questions were allowed. You have gone to uh, lots of sessions and, and press conferences, whether CARICOM, internationally, and so forth. Uh, did you find that as a bit, a little bit unusual, that the press were not allowed to ask questions? It was quite unusual, Mark. And and to be, to be frank, that's one of the reasons I... Uh, I would go to those things is that you have access, you can ask questions, you can uh, meet people and uh, get the background as to exactly what is going on. Because a lot of times uh, these sessions are, are talk shops. They're just called to, as guy need to sit upon, present, no, uh, and position themselves. No, if you're taking a serious issue as a tension that, uh, that arose as a result of what Venezuela has been doing, uh, keeping a, a referendum saying that uh, the people can then give them the power to, um, to annex a, a, another territory. No, that's a serious matter and that's a dangerous matter. Um, so when Capital News realized what was going on and uh, got immersed in, in reporting on it, we decided we're going to call two friends, uh, see how we can raise some funds and, uh, and, and, and get there, uh, jump on the plane and get there. It was a little expensive, but we got there. And to answer your question specifically with regard to the press conference, it's a good thing we were there because the idea was just to come out there and read the statement and, and go their merry way. Um, and at least two of us, the Associated Press reporter from Guyana and myself, raised the issue where if this is, a, is either a press conference or a rally. If it's a press conference you're inviting us to, then you have to make accommodations for the press. You have to make sure that we can ask questions and so on. Clearly, it was not that. It was not even the press availability. It was a platform to come out and say to the public by, by means of the press that this is the declaration that the two countries have decided to go ahead with. And when uh, Rav Gonzalez said there'll be no questions, the declaration will speak for itself, um, the idea was that they didn't want um, the press to delve in. Now, 
now that the declaration is out there in the public domain, clearly what will happen is that people will begin to question what is it that um, the publication of this particular uh, statement would mean for Guyana, for Venezuela, and the relations uh, between the two countries, and relations in the wider CARICOM Latin American sphere. And I think those questions are already coming out. The questions are already coming up. Uh, I'm glad that you made it clear that there was no provision nothing at all, no accommodation for the press coming from Guyana to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and that you guys basically at the last minute have to scramble up to reach there. Uh, meanwhile, some of them from the, uh, the government controlled media houses probably had a, a field day with taxpayers' money. I know, I know how you are when it comes to the press, but that is just my opinion, that with taxpayers' money, independent media houses should have been uh, given that opportunity and so well, 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 Mark, Mark, Mark let, let me make it clear here. Um, sure. This time around, uh, some independent media houses were invited uh, to go and report on this national issue. And there's, there, there's always this position that I have taken. Once it's a national issue that threatens the sovereignty of the state of Guyana, then I have absolutely no problem in the state providing and allowing for the story of Guyana to be told. Not the story of a party, not the story of a government, not the story of an opposition group, not the story of a pressure group, but the story of the state. And to be fair, the state facilitated and paid for some journalists, both from uh, the independent media, as you put it, and uh, from the state media. Now, 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 let, yeah. let, let, me, let, let, let me give you an example where that has happened before. When Guyana had uh, the maritime uh, delimitation challenge with Suriname, the other contiguous state, uh, but we are a contiguous CARICOM state. Uh, again, I remember the foreign minister at the time was Clement Roy, and uh, the, there was supposed to be a meeting in Trinidad and Tobago. Again, three independent journalists, uh, Bert Wilkinson, Julia Johnson, and myself, we were at the airport. We bought tickets at the airport, jumped on the plane, and I remember Roy said, um, you know, where, where are you guys going? We said, we're going there to cover your event. You know, and, and from that, we continue to cover, um, we went to Canoan, which is a uh, part of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We went to Jamaica. And again, the state, notice I'm saying the state supported that effort. And here's why it was important. When we arrived in Trinidad and Tobago, we had to wait for the Surinamese press to turn up before the talks be, began. And if you were in uh, uh, St. Vincent, as we were on Thursday, you would have seen the crush of Venezuelan press. Because to the Venezuelans, this is not just a story about a border. This is a story that they are wrapping themselves around the flag and, and, and becoming patriotic about it. And Guyana, frankly, does not even have a small uh, a portion of the Venezuelan press. And not only I covered Venezuela, not only at the press, uh, there are lots of Venezuelan press. I, I remember uh, President Jaime Lucin she used to walk around with his own makeup artist and, and makeup. My daughter, Kerry, would have gotten a good job there. Um, putting on makeup on, on the president because he was always there, always in the, in, in the public glare. And I'll tell you something about there, about the Venezuela. There is a rough and tumble press. They elbow you out of the way. They make sure that they get their story. So to, 
to just make that point, the Guyana government um, using state resources should, I like to use these three words, mobilize, galvanize, and energize the media to get involved in this particular issue because we have to report on Guyana. And Guyana, according to the constitution of this country, is indivisible. You can add to it, but you can't subtract. Uh, Enrico Wilford, Wilford is here with us tonight. I'm sure uh, Kerry would have loved to probably been there also to put on some makeup on some of our very own local politicians who maybe she can go into parliament sometime and do that to, to some of them. Uh, having said that, uh, what was the mood like? You were there. You saw the interaction uh, or the interactions between the quote unquote leaders of those countries, Venezuela, Suriname, I mean, sorry, uh, Guyana. Uh, especially those two, uh, what was their body language like and facial expression, other than what we saw on photographs and so in the photographs and so forth? But you were there. Both men came determined to put their position out there. Both presidents, President Ali and President Maduro, decided that they were going to put their position out there. Um, and if you would notice, uh, President Ali kept a, a very stern and a very, um, uh, what, I, I don't want to say fixated, but that's the, that's the, the, the um, focused position. That's a better word. President Maduro came with piles of, of documents and um, uh, I, I doubt whether the uh, CARICOM, uh, uh, and the SILA people, SILAC uh, uh, people had actually allowed all of those um, documents uh, to, to go through. But, you know, sometimes when you want to bluff, you just go with a lot of books and so on, playing as if you know that it's in or, there somewhere. Or, 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 you also, or also have a second face too. You bluff both ways too. Go ahead. Yes. So, um, Guyana's position. And the president came in uh, during the second phase of the meetings. Here's, here, here's what happened. You had a, a meeting with CARICOM and, and a meeting with the, with the interlocutors. Um, and that, those meetings set the stage for the meeting with, 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 uh, with President Maduro between uh, President Ali and President Maduro. And I think the CARICOM and the CELAC people were concerned that the region should be a zone of peace. Now that sounds a little, you know, well, it's, you know, you hear these phrases, it's kind of a diplomatic thing. Well, the, the place ought to be a zone of peace. But one has to consider that the, it is still the main activity in this region, tourism. You can't have wars and rumors of wars going on. You know, I'm sure um, Prime Minister Motley turned up uh, because of that and, of course, uh, economic interest between Guyana and, and, and Barbados, um, including black, berry, black uh, belly sheep. Um, and then you, you, you have the, the CARICOM uh, chair uh, was there. The CARICOM officials were also there. Now, we cannot afford in the region to have any skirmish, any tension that will cause people to avoid the region. Because tourists, you've been a tourist, Mark, you know you're not going to, this is the first thing people talk about, the security. So Guyana and um, Venezuela cannot afford to get involved in any uh, skirmish. And then as a lot of people know, one of the main economic interests in terms of uh, foreign investment is the oil and gas sector at the moment, ExxonMobil. And ExxonMobil is, is a U.S. company, and people are always afraid that once you come into an area and you affect U.S. interests, then the U.S. will get involved to protect U.S. interests. Um, and uh, sometimes they use 
um, a lot of things to, to protect U.S. interests uh, if they want to uh, to make a, 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 um, themselves felt as uh, the international policeman. Um, so there are concerns about that too, and uh, and uh, once that happens, then the other the other superpowers may want to say, well, look, we got to support our friends and, and we have um, to keep our interests going to. So you don't want to create any kind of tension, particularly in this part of the world. So that, that's one of the key things about a zone of peace. All right, Enrico Wolford giving us a breakdown. He was there. He saw everything almost. And uh, hence we are getting a good... Um, a good idea, a good sense as to what really transpired there coming from uh, Enrico Wolford, seasoned journalist out there, seasoned journalist. Uh, Enrico, let's move away from that uh, for a moment and let's head to this here, uh, the attack on Travis Chase and the fact that at the, he was asked by the police to hand over his uh, license firearm, which he did. And then while being interviewed by his lawyer, guess what? The police walked in with their cameras interviewing Travis Chase while he was being interviewed by his lawyer. Let us get your take on this uh, recent development. What's going on? Let me say this, Mark. Um, an, attack to, uh, an attack on any journalist is a dangerous precedent, a dangerous situation in any democratic society. And whether the authorities want to uh, couch it and place it in a particular way, and that the, the journalist attacked himself, shot his own gun onto his own car, and all sorts of, um, of uh, unlikely stories, then the police will then have to uh, support that theory um, and they have to support it by independent investigation the police can't invent, investigate themselves if they are then saying that this is what happened um, they, we, 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 we have to move into a situation now particularly for journalists if this kind of thing happens then there has to be an independent uh, investigation done by an independent team, separate and apart from the police, particularly with regard to the ballistics test. And why would they want to compare the ballistics test um, and actually keep it um, for this particular young man? And then you're also exposing him if the the police goes out there and says, well, he took away his gun. Now, if the situation is true that somebody actually attacked um, Travis and Travis is, is, is contending that it is so, then you're putting him in even uh, greater jeopardy by uh, removing a, a form of protection that he has for his for his person, for himself. The other aspect of this is what you asked me about, and the lawyers can speak to that. I saw attorney Roger Yearwood um, in a Facebook post. It was very clear as to um, what are some of the constitutional implications and, um, and extremes uh, when the police decides that when an attorney is meeting with a client, that they are going to come in and videotape and audio tape that 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 operation, and and I think the attorneys will eventually have to take that matter on. It somehow strikes me at the heart of um, uh, a constitutional uh, issue here, where uh, attorney-client privilege is is neither a privilege. Um, you know, uh, uh, nor, uh, nor even a right. All right, Enrico Wolford there. I know I just asked for a few minutes. 
Uh, let me just, uh, as we wrap things up with you, Mr. Wolford, uh, your take on the conclusion of that um, an event out in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, an Argyle agreement. Uh, do you think that it was the best thing for Guyana at this point in time, or somebody's bluffing? More likely, Venezuelans, uh, Venezuela's president, Maduro, is bluffing, or do you think that there's uh, some amount of seriousness to what transpired there as you close off? There is some amount of seriousness, but there are political considerations uh, that are taking place on both sides of the border. Um, once you have politicians involved, they will, uh, of course, want to dig in in their heels and make sure that they, they get elected, re-elected rather. The, I think the, the, the situation on the Western Front in terms of uh, uh, President Maduro is, is a little bit more dire and he is more concerned because he has an election coming up next year. Um, so he has to um, mobilize, galvanize, and energize support over that uh, side of the border. Now, that creates a, a difficulty for Guyana. And here, here, here's a challenge, Mark. You know, many times politicians make decisions and do not realize those decisions have far-reaching consequences. And that's why it's also important for uh, the public to understand that when we elect politicians, when we elect leaders, the, that election has consequences. Let's take a simple situation. Today, I was at a funeral of Brigadier Gary Beaton. And you know, sometimes you don't always remember people when they get a little older. Um, and I looked at his younger picture, and I, I recall uh, where I, I knew him from, and, and, and because one of his colleagues is a very, very good friend of mine, and he flew in uh, for the funeral. And it was so sad to see. All of those people are gathered there because of the consequence of a man on the other side of the border, making a decision that will cause the guys on our side to take action, to do a command mission into Ikeruku, do a command mission into Arau, do a mission along our borders into Ringbang and so on. If that did not happen, we would not have been at at a Brigadier Gary Beaton's uh, funeral and the funeral of uh, Staff Sergeant Khan and, 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 and Michael Charles and, and, and Michael Shahu. Just think about it. Think about it. People come up with, oh, when, when it's time for people to go, they go. But decisions have consequences. Elections have consequences. Leaders have to lead in a way that will take into consideration the consequences. Thank you so much. 45 minutes after 9 o'clock. We appreciate your time, uh, Mr. Enrico Wolford. Uh, but quickly before we go, though, with you, uh, what was what was the interaction like with the Venezuelan um, journalists, uh, reporters out there? Uh, were you guys looking for a war with each other for news, <laughs> that is? <laughs> Even if Venezuelans are reporting on uh, Miss Universe, there is a war. Uh, um, they, they have a tendency to take everything at, at, at an emotional and, and a very strong uh, position. Well, most of them. Uh, some of them I know, and um, they would chat and they would be very um, uh, comfortable with you. But uh, they are, they are, they are, they're an aggressive set in terms of... Um, uh, in terms of getting this story out. Uh, and I don't get them wrong. I mean, I think most journalists ought to be aggressive and ought to um, try to get the best uh, story uh, and uh, on all the angles uh, from the story. And that happened in, 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 in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, but I also felt that a, a lot of it had to do with, with the interlocutors and the, the persons even... Um, uh, Rav Gonzalez, who uh, gives gives them a moment on on the world stage, the 
the, the conflict um, that Venezuela has created between Guyana and itself um, clearly has a worldwide uh, uh, interest. And, um, you know, when, when you have worldwide interest, then you position yourself, you know, to, as Guyanese would say, you position yourself to make sure that you're also seen in the picture. And I think while uh, I might be flippant about that, I think the talking, uh, the dialogue is important. And I'm saying that as Enrico Wolfer, not as, uh, not as a journalist, um, the talking is very important. I know some people who, who, who have said that, you know, the president ought not to have uh, uh, left Guyana and, and, and go talk with anybody. We're, we're at the ICJ and the ICJ will settle the matter. Yes, I think uh, we are at the ICJ, the ICJ will settle the matter. But you've been in court, Mark, and you know sometimes you can also um, talk uh, to the to the people while a um, uh, uh, court matter is on. Um, and if, if 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 they still don't understand your point of view, then you let the judge judge. But you try to get something out of it. Uh, I, I think one of the things that the regime should have gotten is to have Guyana's ambassador finally um, settling in his office in Caracas. That wasn't, uh, apparently, if I had my way, that should have been on the table. And the person that they have appointed, ambassador to Venezuela, should have taken up his position even before they gone to uh, St. Vincent for this talk. And so far, it's an unfair deal. Guyana has... Uh, Venezuelan ambassador right now in Georgetown, and Guyana does not have an ambassador in Caracas. Something isn't adding up there at all, though, Mr. Enrico. Something isn't adding up. Well, a lot of things have to be done. You have to do a lot of. I mean, governance is a is is a is a is a, is a job. That's the reason if you you pay them all that money, they got to work, <laughs> and and um, you have to make sure that all the the, the the facets of 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 government are in fact working mark and you know today i was also talking to the former speaker of, of the national assembly international lawyer barton scotland and i said barton your name call in i mean he and i are, have a very um uh, good working relationship with regard to this whole issue of whether uh, there was um some offer to Venezuela in the maritime thing. And according to Mr. Scotland, that never happened. There's no evidence that that has happened. And there's no reason that he would, he, he would do that. He would, and he would not even have had the authority to do it. And you're, not, you're talking about under the PNC government that that never happened. That's what Dr. That, that never happened. Yeah. And you know, the thing about Guyana is, 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 is sometimes uh, uh, things are, are brought up. You know, I always tell people this idea that Burnham was the fifth richest uh, black man or the third richest black man in the world was printed in some magazine. Um, nobody's ever produced a magazine. I went to the, um, to the Library of Congress to look for these magazines, look for this book. It's not in there anywhere. And nobody, nobody in the world They'd have to create one now it's, it's just that. to do it. But what we do is that we make up a story and it runs and look, just look over to at Venezuela and you'll see that that is what has happened. They have made up this story since 1962 that this is what has happened and we got robbed and we and Nancy stories. And, thing. Nancy stories. And, it, and, and it's their own Nancy story. You know, um, you know what, Enrico. And it's difficult to tell, to tell people. Yeah, that this is know. one story. This is one story we're not making up, though. Which this one? Here. This one. You could probably, on the maritime area, give Venezuela a channel out to the sea. So you make a slight concession in the maritime area. We making that one up at all. Well, I just said that there, there, there are people who have been on, on various media who've said that the person who said that was the person I spoke to with today. That did not happen. Yeah. Um, but 
so often in, as I said, it's so often in governance, so often in politics, we continue to perpetuate uh, um, a particular line. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go down. We continue to perpetuate a, a particular line. And that is why you have journalists. You know, just like what that is why you have people in the media. Was Ben Sharp and others stormed the office of the president in an attempt to overthrow the elected, stormed the office of the president when there was no evidence of there was no storming, there was nothing. They violated Mark, the rights of those. But I get Mark, exactly so, what you so often I've, I've covered a story that when I see how other people have reported it, if I weren't there, I wouldn't believe it myself. If I weren't there, so where? often, where, if you want, uh, where come up with an yeah. angle with with with, with a spin mm -hmm. that unless you're there, absolutely, you know, they would do they, and that's one of the reasons I went to St. Vincent because I know that, particularly from our neighbors on the Western Front, that they would um have their side only uh out there in, in the public domain. And do remember that as journalists and uh, uh, and, and journalists who have been around a little while, like myself and, and Bert Wilkinson, about 80 years of um, experience between the, the two of us. Um, when you add them together, that is. Um, we also have contacts uh, internationally. Um, so they're able to chat with us and, 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 and we can explain a situation to them that... Mm -hmm. uh, that we could only coach and, uh, and, and, and uh, mentor the younger journalists. Um, Gordon Mosley was there, for example, and, and, and he's a lot younger than we are. And then there are persons who are a lot younger than he is um, who are also uh, there. So even if, even if this thing goes to Brazil, Brazil then will then have a larger body of journalists involved and the story can get even bigger. Uh, so we have to make sure that Guyana's um, position, however people want to argue it, the opposition people will argue, some pressure groups will argue, some, um, some people who, who know international relations and international law may also argue in terms of diplomacy and, and, and the technical people and so on. And there were technical people that Guyana took to the, to the meeting. So... The idea is to get the story out and get, get Guyana's side out. And once we do that, then we are able to tell the real story, the true story, the story that needs to be told. And I think that's very important. Very important indeed. Uh, Enrico Wolfert said between himself and um, um, the other gentleman, I, my friend. Mark Wilkinson. Mark, we got 80 Mark years experience. Let me add it. 80 years. I, I find that Mark hard. Mark and I nearly the same age. I find that he hard. Looks to better than I do. I find that hard to believe that Bert and you together accumulated over 80 years together. Maybe one, but not the two of you. But not together. Please, Enrico. Uh, Wayne Caesar would say, and Wayne is a big, as we were saying, guy, a big old hard back man. Like when Caesar could say that he grew up as a little boy watching you. Uh, Wayne, thank you for your patience, sir. I appreciate yes, sir, it. Sir. I know you may have a, a, a quick question for Enrico because I just asked him for a few minutes and I'd love to accommodate you to ask him a quick question about maybe the event out in St. Vincent or any quick question you have for him, please, sir. Well, 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 first and foremost, Mark, good evening to you. Good evening to Mr. Wolford and good evening to all our listeners and viewers. Well, I would like to you know, personally, thank Mr. Wolford for bringing the coverage um, from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you know, bipartisan coverage. And, you know, in listening to him, you know, we had a couple of generations of um, reporters there, as he would have said, him, Gordon Mosley, and then they had reporters that were um, younger than, you know, both of them. But Mr. Wolford, my question to you is in looking at the whole meeting from a holistic um, perspective, do you think anything discussed in that meeting does anything for the normal man and woman on the ground in Guyana? Yes, Wayne, I think it cools the temperature a little. 
and that is important. Um, uh, we don't we, we we often don't consider the stress levels of people. Um, we like Christmas and we like make pepper pot and so on and so on. We don't want to be say uh, thinking during that period. You know that there there's a Venezuelan fifth columnist so that something is going to happen in the in the society. We've already lost um, uh, uh, five uh, military uh, men. Um, Yes, it was an accident, but I, as, as I said, I think it was an indirect consequence of, 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 a, of a political decision in another state that is uh, seeking to annex a part of our state. So we've got to be on the qui vive, on the alert, and make sure that the society is informed. And, and my mantra has always uh, been to, to, in, to be informed before you seek to inform. Uh, and so for the for the small man on the road, he must be comfortable that look the the, the there is a de-escalation, there's a calm. Um, the the Guyana ha, ha, through this um, this process has been able to get Venezuela to declare that they will not use force to. And when we uh, and when we say force, I I I I think we have to make sure that uh, both sides understand that uh, we 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 mean that there is no armed conflict, there is no violent uh, intrusion into our society. Do remember, in I think it was 1969, January second or third, if not the first, there was the. Rupununi uprising that had some backing from Venezuela um, and that cost some lives. The children of those persons who died are um, around and are conscious of what happened, right? So as we go into the holiday season, uh, one has to think about the the young people, the people on the road, the, the, the regular Guyanese people, who it is the duty of the of, of the state to ensure that they are secure. Now, I I, I hear a lot of people talking about um, whether um, the you know we call it a controversy, and the Venezuelans had a territory in dispute in there. Um, uh, unfortunately, that is how the International Court of Justice uh, ruled in the provisional uh, rulings in terms of territory in dispute. And by the way, that, though, that, though that phrase was only used twice, two times, twice, in the declaration, controversy, border controversy, um, Con controversies together. Those words were used five times. And when you're doing diplomatic language and international, those, those, those things are important. So to me, it helps to uh, calm nerves and, and make sure that we, while we have this case ongoing at the International Court of Justice, we have the Venezuelan president uh, getting up and making decrees and, and saying he's appointed a governor and obviously people and all kind of worries that he has no authority to do in our, in our state. Um, people particularly in the border areas, people particularly in the capital uh, city and in other population centers must be given that assurance that the state is there to protect them I will keep them safe. Thank you so much for that question, Wayne. Thank you for responding. Uh, quickly before uh, you go, Enrico, uh, big plans for the Christmas. What's the mood like of the people on the ground uh, in, pre in preparing for uh, Christmas holidays? Oh, my, oh, you're going to stop Guyanese when it comes to Christmas. <laughs> um, I, 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 I was fortunate to get somebody to... Uh, give me a ride back to my home through the um, 
through downtown Georgetown today, and I had to ask the man if today is Friday. I mean, it was so busy, and um, it continues to be like that. Uh, to be quite honest, I try to avoid the city center because of that. Guyanese love Christmas, and all of those who are listening out in uh, in in the um, U.S. and in Canada and in um, in the U.K. and wherever Guyanese are, if you get a chance, come home. We have a nice Christmas. The weather is is fine. It's a little hot, uh, um, and it's not raining as as much. And make sure you come home if you're living in France, if you're living in Germany. You know, Guyanese living and watching you all over the place, Mark. So the the evening in Africa. And the good thing is that there are flights coming in. You've, you've got British Airways. You've got American Airlines, JetBlue. Caribbean Airlines did a splendid job in getting us to and from St. Kitts. St. Uh, Vincent, sorry. And um, again, uh, we have... Um, the, the the I think we need more air link and, and air bridges, um, and I'm hoping that people will talk to the Guyana Civil Aviation Authority, particularly between um, Guyana and the African continent and, um, and 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 the rest of Asia and the Middle East. I think we need that kind of. Um, I want to see flights from Dubai, flights from Ethiopia, flights from Kenya, flights from. Uh, uh, Delhi flights from Lagos and, uh, and uh, Abuja. So uh, people, whoever they are, can come and enjoy Guyanese Christmas. And of course, um, last week, last weekend, I went to a Pepper Park, Pepper Park Festival. Uh, Brainchild of Andrea, Brian Garner. A beautiful thing, man. We had um, vegetarian Pepper Park. Uh, you know, I mean, Guyanese are are, are, are superb in terms of creativity. Which brings me to one thing that I want to talk about, and I want to compliment a young designer called Randy Madre. The president wore, the Ghana president wore an armband in leather displaying the Ghana uh, map. And um, on, you know, it, the what, what, what that points out, Randy was, was making this point, that the importance of art to our society, the importance of also calling the name of the artist and giving that artist some recognition. Sadly, we, we display the band and we say yes, um, but we should also say how we can use art, how we can use the creative work to um explain our positions and to release the tension in the society so we should be able to go out and and watch the woodside choir and listen to them and listen to the festival of carols and so on and recognize these people who are involved in art and the creative and the literary um scene in the country because it is also important to keep the society as a cohesive society and to keep the society uh, going and uh, being a little bit more relaxed. What do you do when you are relaxed? You either go out as Guyanese to have a drink or you go to the theater, movie theater or otherwise. All right, Enrico, it seems as though you're in a talking mood and uh, I assume that uh, Wayne That's has why we have question. Dave Martins. Uh, Wayne has another question for you. We'll go ahead. We'll talk all night. Go ahead. I notice you don't want to go. When when you see so Pat is probably not home. Give uh, your beautiful wife Pat my regards. No, my beautiful wife is home and listening. She is. Give her my regards. Yes. Uh, Wayne. I will do. Enrico doesn't want to go. Give him another question, please. Uh, well, this one is going to be a funny one. I was I was hoping that um, Mr. Wolford would have um receive this money that has been owed to him for some time now that he could have um you know spent you know no money yet uh, and, 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 and look and share spirit. with us he said everybody the place crowded people in the audience saying today's payday and when Guyanese get paid they're going and spend the 6.5 uh, that little amount of 6.5 things rough in the country you know Enrico things really rough we want to remind people about that because look 
Listen to what this lady has to say. Oh, Jesus Christ, if cost a living double, I don't know what happened. A pound of sugar is $300 already. Flour, everything gone up. Everything just raising. You got to get about $40,000 for buy good ration. You got to get three man now. A weekend man, a monthly man, and a, and a um, fortnight man. And come Christmas time now, you gotta get pepper pot, man. <laughs> things rough in that country, Enrico. Lots of discrimination, all manner of things. Let me not, even though it's Christmas time, we might say, let me forget about that for a moment. We can't forget because the political snakes will sneak up and gone right back to their old habits again. Racial discrimination, uh, unemployment on the increase. Um, lots of things happening. You have a school in Linden in complete depriving hundreds of young people the opportunity to go. Lots of not so good things happening in that country. But Mr. Um, Caesar, you asked uh, Enrico about his money. He, he didn't get his money yet. People are being persecuted in that country even as we ap approach Christmas time. Lots of bad things happening there. But let's hear what happened to your money. You get your money for Christmas? No, I have not received it. And um, let, let me say this. I moved to the court as a result of the, um, of the way that I was treated and the way that um, I felt that uh, the society ought not to treat somebody who has been around, who has um, done, uh, as far as I'm concerned, exceptional work um, from from most of my, my career. And because I went to the court, I trusted the system. N now, it is unfortunate that even while I was in the court, the same thing that we're talking about at the level of two countries internationally, we don't practice it internally. And that is, oh man, talk to the man. Tell him, oh yes, yeah, but you took us to court where we could we could settle this matter or something like that. They, 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 and sometimes it's good to cover these things internationally because it shows what we need to do internally. You know? Um, and we've, we, we have to make other moves to for me to receive the gratuity. And I may not be uh, perfectly on the ball with regard to the number, but I know there's an article in the Constitution that I have right behind me here that says Article 149. I think it's 149B. And 149B speaks to the fact that once you are you are involved in the public sector. And let me read it. Article 149B. Every public sector worker shall enjoy an absolute and enforceable right to any pension or gratuity granted to him or her under the provision of any law or collective agreement of any kind whatsoever. This is in the Constitution of this cooperative republic of guyana it doesn't say upon appraisal or upon job performance or anything it's an absolute right an enforceable right to any pension or gratuity under the provision of any law or collective agreement of any kind now if the collective agreement says uh these are the conditions under which you have to then you have to uh subscribe to those conditions but if it doesn't if there's no um then you have to go as to that it is a uh, absolute and enforceable right and one of the challenges is that we in guyana tend to treat with people scantily and we've got to make sure that we do not do that and we the same things that we are requiring at an international level, in terms of civil rights, human rights, uh, defense rights, diplomacy, and all the other things, we also need to make sure that internally those things are happening. 
right? Um, Mark, yes, you, 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 you've raised issues of discrimination in, in, in the society. Um, uh, how we, 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 we deal with development issues. Um, the, the fact that our drains don't drain if, <laughs> in an effective manner. Um, particularly in the city, and if the government could um, do work in the city, they could also give the city council. You may not, you don't have to like them to give people something. Christmas time, I see a lot of people go and give children, you know, bless the children with 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 stuff. They don't have to. They, they don't know who they are. They don't have their their political their their, uh, their parents' political persuasion. Um, you you can look at them and, uh, and and decide well this person looks chinese this person looks african this person looks indian or portuguese or 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 or, or french or, or venezuela for that matter but that is not the underlying reason that you you share and as um nigel hughes like to say you got to share the corn and once you share the car, then follow the gather, you know. And internationally, we're seeing that happening with regard to we have money. And as my Jamaican friend likes to say, when when Daga money, you buy flea. So we have to make sure that the society does not squander. Because remember, you squander money, it goes somewhere, it doesn't fall off the face of the earth. So if you lose money in this in, in, in Georgetown, it will pop up in Vienna or in, 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 in Basel or, or, or in Zurich, you know? So one has to uh, look at a society that grows and develops in an equitable and a fair and a decent manner. And um, I think that is very important. You should be able to do uh, all the things that you need to do. And again, as I said earlier on, that is why you elect leaders and they have a lot of responsibility, uh, including making sure the school in Linden or wherever it is, um, is done. And all the other schools are done at the, at the level. And of course, look after the elderly. I'm very concerned about... Um, uh, a brother who is uh, probably 96 by now, uh, and the conditions under which he lives. And uh, I, I, I mentioned it to, um, to the minister responsible for social services. And she said, yeah, 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 we're going to, we are going to go visit him. But here's, here's a, a senior who has to live under, he, he, has, a, he has a good house and, and what have you, but the conditions are difficult and it's a society that has to be concerned about caring mark right. mark uh, yeah go ahead win as we yeah prepare. yeah because i think you know i i just posed that question to mr wolford but um it opened some other doors in that he went to the guyana constitution and that brings me to another question mr wolford looking at the way that geopolitics is evolving rapidly. Do you think our constitution in Guyana, because right now when I look at the constitution and I look at the way that it is treated, it looks like if everyone is taking the constitution and mopping the floor with it. And in some cases, people tend to use it for their convenience whenever they see you know that they're in a position in a winning position using that constitution they go and they grab it but whenever the situation doesn't favor them people seem to do whatever they please and you would have said it they went internationally and deals were made you know with this recent meeting in St Vincent and the Grenadines but like we like to say, one should practice what they preach and that charity begins at home. You know, we don't see this. I would just like to have your take. 
I, I, I'm not a constitutional lawyer. I, I am not even an attorney. I, um, and, but I believe in in the rule of law. I believe in following um, uh, the regulations, and I also am very concerned that we can so we sign on to international treaties. We sign on to uh, agreements. We we talk about things, and then, as you said, we don't practice what we preach. And we have to ho hold all our leaders accountable, all our leaders accountable in terms of practicing what we preach. For example, I'll give you an example. We all are praising the housing drive and, and what have you and so on. But there is a process by which um, housing estates and housing um, uh, schemes are done. So you're supposed to have four certificates, second certificate, and so I'm talking after my wife here because she has been involved in the process. And many times, because we want political expediency, we go ahead and do things without the due processes that are necessary or the due process uh, that is necessary for, for the thing to get done. And... I'm always concerned with when somebody calls me and says, if you know anybody, act. Because it tells you that the system doesn't work properly. If you got to know somebody inside, whether you're doing roads, whether you're doing lights, whether you're doing water, they are a set of things that are supposed to be done. And let's take um, the water sector. The, I don't know if they still spend a lot of money, but if you reach out to the Ghana Water Inc., the amount of stuff that they have to remove to bring us clean water, that is costly. And if you speak to Richard Van der Star, Sheikh Bash was there, you speak to whoever is there now, uh, Mr. Joe uh, was there, you speak to them and they will tell you that that is a problem. But do we, as I was talking about earlier on, do we teach our, our children, teach our society that littering, that throwing um, things in the garbage, um, in, in our waterways will not only pollute the waterways, will cause us problems will cause the fish problems. And those are the same fish that we need to eat um, later on for our, for, for our own survival. So we have to look at the society holistically and make sure that it functions properly. And if we put laws in place to make sure you have first certificate, second certificate or whatever, and you make sure that the water, um, uh, the drains are, 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 are done and, the, and the, when, you, when you open the coke, it actually empties uh, gets most of the water off the land um, instead of having to, as Gaini said, pay a junkie to jump in and remove the bottles from around the um, the the pump, or let those um, those uh, say those, those uh, bottles go out in, in, into the into the ocean and then they wash back onto the beach, uh, the beaches and then and 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 the thing that we pay money to do it. It's, it's a society that needs to function properly. We were in Singapore one time, uh, Mark and Wayne. And uh, Singapore, we were being driven around by a, by a colonel. This was Minister um, Cathy Hughes and, and I. We were in Singapore. And the colonel said to us, uh, Minister, this is a fine country, you know. Um, and the minister said, yes, yes, I, I've noticed. In fact, she was saying that it is a fine country. He said, yes, it's a, it, it's a fine country. They fine you for everything. They place a fine on you if you take your, your, your gum, let's say, and put it in, on a chair. They, they do all these things um, to make sure that the society functions properly. And one of the challenges is, as I said, we always call in somebody, you know, 
you know somebody inside, you know, do we, I got to get around this. We got to get around customs. You got to get around police. You got to get around. Why? Our society is built on law and order. And we don't need to do all of that. And uh, people build, a man come and say he's a mason, and then they, they were all dead. So, you know, um, again, the, 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 the professionals, the uh, Ghana Association of Professional Engineers could, if, the, if, if, if our, our, our leadership wants to make sure that these things happen, that, uh, that, that um, uh, put these things in place, that um, a, a young um, radio presenter had issues with her contractor, you know? And then you got to pay, um, I think Melly Mel or somebody raised issues in the housing sector. Yes, we can come out and deny it. Oh, this never happened. We do you know, everybody denies it. But as Guyanese say, all of you know what's going on down in the... <laughs> down at, at the grassroots level you know um so yes to answer your question they are challenges and those challenges um the leadership uh, on, on all sides if you if you're running for office then you should be able to demonstrate that you will provide Ghana with the kind of services that you we don't need to call anybody inside lots and lots of corruption in the 23 minutes after 10 o'clock in guyana we really have to go it's friday night guys we've been busy all week uh enrico looks as though he slept until midday he's ready to go all night but we really really have to go lots and lots of problems in guyana and uh we are just going to get over with this Christmas season, and then we're back to square one with racial discrimination, Enrico not getting his money, another form of discrimination. People whose cases are being, uh, you know, lingering and, and, and lost away in the court system, massive corruption. People are asking you, you know somebody at the DPP, you know somebody, we, we live in a, you know somebody, when you know somebody at um welfare office, Enrico, you know somebody at Sandy's funeral home? No, they don't ask those sort of things, all right? But uh, we live in a, you know, this and you know that. But Enrico, I just want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you for what you have done, uh, your contributions and so forth in the field of journalism. Uh, you're 80 plus years, along with Bert Wilkinson. I just mentioned that. Um, thank you so much. And it's a shame that someone like you who have, contributed so much to Guyana. You have to keep fighting the system, a system that doesn't work. Regardless of how we twist and turn it, the system doesn't work. It only works, as Wayne alluded to earlier, with those who are in control of the system. It works for them, but it doesn't work for the uh, overall population. It doesn't work for you. You shouldn't have to be fighting the system to get what belongs to you. Your money. You deserve that. You work for it. It's yours. It's a shame and a disgrace. Thank you so much, though, for your time, Enrico. Happy holidays to you and your beautiful family. Uh, give my regards to Pat. Um, but before we go, you want to tell the people them so that they can go over to your Capital News and see what's happening on your Capital News page. Yes, we are still on. We are, um, if you watch Terrestrial TV, we are still on Channel 7. That's WRHM uh, TV 7 in Georgetown in, in Guyana. Um, and you could also uh, follow us on Facebook or on, on our Capital News, C-A-P-I-T-O-L, Capital News, um, on our Facebook page. Of course, I've got my own uh, Facebook page too under my name and I, I share a lot of what uh, Capital News uh, reports. And then on Instagram, we are at WRHM News. Uh, that's WRHM News and uh, CapitalNewsOnline.com on our website. We also have uh, a TikTok page that is also, again, Capital News with C-A-P-I-T-O-L, as against A-L. 
that's that's a money capital. The other capital is uh, is the administrative capital. You know, you, you know, Enrico, they can't beat you, man. You just had your trademark. Uh, this was Capital <laughs> News. Goodbye now. And so goodbye we, for now. Thank you, though, Enrico. We appreciate. Thank it. you very much, Mark. We appreciate you, sir. Thank Good. you. Goodbye for now. Goodbye for now. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, uh, I don't, I don't know. After tonight, I think um, Enrico. I'm going to send Enrico a message. Uh, this is going to be the message, and it's for you too. So I, I'm not in the best of mood, but this message is for you, both you and Enrico, not our members of our audience. You and Enrico. I don't want anything at all to communicate with him about. I don't want him to tell me morning. I'm not telling him morning. Not only not talking to him, not answering the phone. <laughs> These guys are not kids. <laughs> but uh, Monday morning, we'll be carrying this here, the the decision, order 60. I know you've been hitting home at that, uh, Wayne. But on Monday, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, right here, it'll be 9.30 guy in a time, we will carry live coverage of the decision. Order 60, elections petition decision. Wayne, as always, thank you for your time. I know you may have a very brief closing remarks. Uh, remarks, sorry. Uh, go right ahead, sir. But before you do, let me just say thank you as always. I know there are times you're very busy doing your your work uh, because Wayne does work. He's not like me running around babysitting and all manner of things. But thank you so much for always taking time out to uh, grace us with your presence on 107.1 FM. Thank you, sir. Your closing remarks. Sure, Mark. It's it's a pleasure, Mark. And you know, this is this is for the Guyanese people. You know, I love my brothers and sisters. And what better way, you know, to come out and and show support for them? Um, my closing remark, Mark, would just be, you know, for um, my brothers and sisters in Guyana to stay positive. I know, you know, financially, you guys are are strapped because we would have seen the raises that would have been given out to our public servants. And, you know, across the board, even pe even people who work in the private sector, Mark, I think, you know, is entitled and, and need a raise just based on the way cost of living has moved and the way inflation has gone. And the government have done nothing to temper inflation or cost of living. So it just continues to go through the roof and it's business as usual for the government. But it is the people who are paying the price. And as Mr. Wolford would have said earlier, you know, Guyanese really love Christmas. And Mark, I'm guaranteeing you that you're going to have a lot of Guyanese that's going to be broke in January. So, you know, um, I, 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 Guyanese are broke, uh, you know, because they, they, while the people are just eating ordinary stuff, they, those big fat cats in office, in, in, in government offices and so forth, they're eating lavishly, you know. Lavishly, this is how they eat. Meanwhile, the ordinary people got to be like this here. Oh, Jesus Christ. If cost of living double, I don't know what happened. A pound of sugar is $300 already. Flour, everything gone up. Everything just raising. You got to give a fart it everything raising all sorts of thing every single thing raising meanwhile in saint vincent and the grenadines they get a paku there as prime minister i don't want anything at all to communicate with him about i don't want him to tell me morning i'm not telling him morning not only not talking to him not answering the phone thing he has to say to them you could probably on the maritime area give Venezuela a channel out to the sea. So you make a slight concession in the maritime area. I don't want have anything at all to communicate with him about. I don't want him to tell me morning. I'm not telling him morning. In 1950, Barbados had 200,000 people and the Bahamas and Belize had 80,000 each. Today, Bahamas and Belize have over 400,000 people, and Barbados has, 73 years later, 269,000 people. We have to have conversations. 
because as much as others would like to have the joyful way to success, there is also the need for the managed way of migration if we are not going to leave our people exposed to the headwinds. This is a very simple equation, you know. If the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Mia Motley, wants to increase the population of Barbados, all she got to do is encourage them to have sex with opposite sex. And so you can't have sex with the same sex and expect your population to grow. And in fact, you know, the Prime Minister herself needed to add to the number. You can't expect the people to have children. You ain't got no children. You got you to put one on the table too. And so in order to do that, you need a man. I don't want to have anything at all to communicate with him about. I don't want him to tell me morning. I'm not telling him morning. Not only not talking to him, not answering the phone. If you just know you're that girl, yeah. you just have no choice but to be that girl. And I feel like I'm... These, these so-called politicians, these so-called leaders, don't tell me nothing, don't call on the phone. Y'all don't tell me nothing back until Monday morning. Mr. Wayne Caesar, thank you so much for your time, though. Enjoy your weekend. Hopefully, we'll have a live at uh, at um, Clive, Clive, um, Clive Barbershop tomorrow. I don't know what's going on. We got to schedule that. We may do a live there at the barbershop. And then, guys, at 2 o'clock, around between 12 to 2, at Linda's restaurant in Brooklyn there on Church Avenue from 12 to 2. Take your kids there. They're giving away toys. Sunday, this Sunday, 12 to 2, between 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock, they will be giving away toys. It's Linda's way of giving back. That's all we wish to say. Wayne, thank you so much. You can don't 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 dress up anybody, Rick Ford and and, and these guys and carry them down there as though they're your kids to get extra toys. Big Ford is a big old hard back man, right? So don't don't fake the system. Real kids go down there. Go down there at Linda's restaurant this Sunday from 12 to 2 o'clock. Wayne, thank you so much for your time and continue the good work. God thank bless. you so much, Mark, and good night, everyone. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right, Wayne Caesar there for you guys. Monday, live coverage right here on 107.1 FM uh, from 8.30. Decision on Order 60 of the elections petition. My name is Mark Benjap, and for tonight, we just say thank you all for listening. God bless you. God bless your family. God bless a beautiful country, Guyana. And even in our adopted home country, God bless America too. Look, men, come, come a little closer. I told you women that they get some men are very emotional the bumps raise. And when the bumps raise, they can't control their emotions. I'll leave you guys with one example. I don't want to have anything at all to communicate with him about. I don't want him to tell me morning. I'm not telling him morning. Not only not. I don't want to have anything at all to communicate with him about. I don't want him to tell me morning. I'm not telling him morning. Not only not talking to him, not answering the phone. Hello, this is attorney Shellen Washington, owner and founder of the Washington Law Firm, located at 455 Utica Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. We're specialized in medical malpractice, personal injuries, matrimonial law, and landlord and tenant. If you're in need of legal representation, please give us a call today. The number to call is 718-877-3100. Consultation is free at no cost to you. So call us today to see if we can be of any assistance to your legal needs. Again, the phone number to call us is 718-877-3100. Thirty-one I don't want to have anything at all to communicate with him about. I don't want him to tell me morning. I'm not telling him morning. Not only not talking to him, not answering the phone.